is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, oh, worthy for he is good. Yes, he is good. So we say, God, my Savior, God, my healer, oh, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is. Clap your hands, clap your hands, say come on, clap your hands, everybody clap your hands, oh, come on, clap your hands, everybody clap your hands, come on, clap your hands, everybody clap your hands. Hallelujah. Somebody give the name of the Lord praise. Somebody give the name of the Lord praise. For he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We glorify him. We give his name glory. We thank the Lord for his inimitable goodness. We thank the Lord for his, his excellent greatness. Now in the name of Jesus, we give the Lord our praise. And we thank him for this incredible day that God has given us. Amen. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We thank God for uh, this wonderful time that he's given us just to do this thing for us, to, to celebrate him today. Amen. And so I'm just going to ask of you one thing today, just to worship our king. Worship our king. Amen. Because he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy of worship. That means we need to devote our total selves to him. We need to cast aside all other cares and concerns and put God first right now. So I want you to do something for me. I want you to consecrate the space where you are. I want you to just take time, amen, and, 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 and say that this is my worship space right now. Every place that my feet will plant, I declare as the territory of the Lord. And we bless him because it's his territory. So wherever you set your feet, that's where you are to declare your worship place. Amen. Amen. We bless God because he, uh, he's allowed us to come into the house of God, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him and we bless his name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank him today. Hallelujah. Won't you just take a moment and just center down and thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We give you praise. We offer you praise. We offer you thanksgiving, God. We come into your courts, hallelujah, with praise even now, Lord. We're just thankful to be alive another day, God, just to celebrate you, to salute you, and to tell you how excellent you are. Oh, God, we ask that you would just clear our minds and clear our hearts, God, clear our circumstances and help us to focus right on you because in you is peace in you is love in you lord god there is no fear in you there is no imperfection lord god in you there is no circumstance but there is only victory and so we bless you on this day god we love you and we give you glory. We invite you into our hearts. We invite you into our space. We invite you into our lives. Lord God, speak through us. Sing through us. Preach through us. 
witness through us, Lord God. Think through us so that we might be the ones to get the benefit and you the one to get the glory. And we offer this all to you in the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. On this day, we are, we are celebrating uh, our communion Sunday on today. And so if you have not prepared your elements, we're going to ask you to do that just to prepare your elements for communion. And uh, we'll, we'll get ourselves uh, during the broadcast and during this worship service, uh, get yourself equipped. Amen. At the end of service, we will celebrate the Lord and the fellowship with God in communion. And we give him thanks on, in that way. We want to say happy birthday to all those who have a birthday today. If you're celebrating a birthday today, happy birthday. Amen. If you're celebrating a birthday sometime this week between now and Sunday when we believe the Lord will allow us to get back together again, we say to you happy birthday and enjoy your birthday, your celebration. We celebrate with you because we believe that you're a precious gift that God has dropped into this earth around for such a time as this. Amen. It's not just about celebrating your age uh, getting higher and higher, but we celebrating you're getting more excellent with each year to come, that the Lord is moving more powerfully in your life. And we thank God for you because, uh, because God has built a modern day army for this purpose, that he would win this kingdom. Those who have not received his, his gracious provision of salvation, that it's up to us. Amen. And there is a cosmic war going on. I want you to know that. There is something going on out in the heavenlies that we need to know about. Amen. And, but we are equipped to fight the, the, the good fight of faith. Amen. So we, we say happy birthday because you're precious to us. If you're celebrating an anniversary, we say happy anniversary to you. We celebrate with you. And whatever good thing that the Lord has done in your life as you celebrate, we celebrate with you. Amen. We rejoice with you. If you are in distress, in pain, amen, we, we, we take this time to stand with you, to ask the Lord to lift you up from your place of affliction, from your place of heaviness, from your heart which is broken. We ask the Lord to lift you out of the depths of depravity and the depths of despair and the depths of depression and ask the Lord to just lift you and to be with you and to look right in your face and say to you that I will not leave you nor will I forsake you. And that all is well because I am still on the throne. Amen. I want you to know that, that all is not lost. I want you to just persevere. I want you to just hold, keep the faith, hold on tight. Because God has yet uh, a, a part of the journey that you have not concluded and not finished. Amen. For those of you who have had death in your families or death of close loved ones, we, we know that the spirit of grief is heavy, but the spirit of praise hallelujah, is a garment that can overcome the spirit of grief. We pray your loved ones have been released into the realms of glory and that there will be a comfort to your hearts even now to know that your relative is safe in the bosom, in the arms of Jesus Christ. Amen. While we yet labor, we do so with the expectation that we'll see our loved ones even again. Amen. So we bless God. We've got every reason to bless him today and to give him thanks. Amen. We want to remind you of a, a couple of events that we're having on this week, on this coming Friday. We're going to be celebrating our virtual Valentine Day, Valentine's Day. And uh, if you have not gone out to the website at www.haskellheightsfbc.com, we ask that you would go out there, push that button, push the flyer button, and it will take you to a registration form. All are welcome. We ask that you would, uh, the, the, the gist is this, we're asking that you would get together, decorate your table in your own space, decorate your table, and then join us for a Zoom uh, fellowship together and get ready for our virtual Valentine celebration. We're asking that you would please just take this opportunity today as we need to know the numbers of people who will be present with us uh, so that we can make this a, a, a great occasion. Amen. And then the ladies are getting together for a bake-off, amen, a heart-healthy bake-off. And we're asking that you would uh, participate in the heart-healthy bake-off, amen. You can also go to the website, click the button there, and, um, and you can register to be a part of that virtual experience of bake-off. And that's going to be an exciting time for the ladies as well. And so uh, I'm looking forward to it already because I like baked goods, amen. So 
bless God. So we want you to be a part of those. And any other thing that we are part of, you can download our mobile app under Haskell Heights First Baptist Church in your mobile app store. Or you can visit our website and you can join in to be a part of these events. If at any time you want to be connected with us at the, be at the beginning, through in the middle, or at the end of this service or this message, if the Lord has touched your heart and you want to reach out to us and say to us, we just want uh, a closer walk with Jesus, we're, we're in position to help you do that. And so we're saying to you, reach out to us. Push the Get Connected button. Push the Contact Us button. If you just have a prayer request, we're asking that you would just submit your prayer request and we'll be praying with you that the Lord would move mightily in your life. Amen. And we bless God for you on this day. Amen. As usual, we want to thank all those who support the ministry diligently and we thank you. Amen, that you, you helped us, amen, to, to execute the work of ministry during the 2020 year in such a peculiar year. But you did your part, and we're saying thank you, and we're asking you to do your part again. But how about this? Step it up. I'm going to step up my game this year. You're going to step up yours? Amen. We want to support this kingdom because we are in the last days, and God has given us incredible vision. We're going to be preaching on that today and giving us incredible wisdom to move forward, that, to execute moving forward this kingdom agenda that God has given us. Amen. And we want to be able to do it with all the resources that God has gifted us to do it with. So we're asking if you would consider to support the ministry, you can, you can click one of the giving buttons either on our website or you can click the button on our church app to give. And uh, we are grateful for, for, any, uh, for any offerings, tithes and offerings and any donations that you choose to be of support to the ministry with. And, um, and, and ap after this, we're just saying, get your communion things ready. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to give him some praise. We're going to get in jubilation with God. God draws near. He says, hallelujah. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Be a part of this blessing as we get ready to worship our king. Amen. Together. And we, 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 honor, we honor you because you honor the Lord. So we're a team together and we bless God. Come on, let us worship our King. God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we just begin to open up our mouths in our secret places, in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, and begin to bless God, saying, God, I love you. God, I praise you. God, I open my mouth and I bless you because you're holy, because you're worthy, because you're awesome, because you're mighty, because you are great, God. Hallelujah. Beside you, there is no other. Hallelujah, God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We worship your name, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 There is none like God in all the earth. And we are so grateful to be connected to him. If you're glad to be connected to God, can you just lift your hands and open your mouth? Hallelujah. God, you are. You worthy, you worthy, Lord, you worthy, you worthy, you're awesome, Lord. Oh, you worthy, you worthy, you worthy, you worthy. And we're here in this month of February, amen. 2021, we survived 2020. And here we are celebrating Black History Month. Amen. Proud to be in the skin we are in. Hallelujah. Amen. So God, we give thanks to God this morning. And this song just says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. If you know that God is good, can you just sing along with us? Hallelujah. Unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy. Oh, worthy for he is 
good. Yes, he is good. Come on, say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good, for he is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, oh, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, oh, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, oh, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is righteous, righteous, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is righteous, oh, righteous, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is holy, holy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is holy, holy, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy, for he is good. Yes, he is our God is worthy, oh, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. Our God is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. So we say. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, yes, he is. say, God, my Savior, God, my
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're like me and you've made some personal changes in your life, amen, changes to better yourself, changes to do better, right? And uh, I know this week was a little tough for me as far as keeping up with some of those goals and controlling our mind, amen? So this scripture stuck out with me. It's from Philippians chapter four. It says, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. And if you know God, you know that he is the most beautiful. He is the most consistent. He's the most loving. So basically he's saying, put your thoughts on me. Don't think about the things that you did wrong. Don't think about the things that didn't go right this week. Let's get a hard reset today and focus on God. Give him your goals. Make him your priority and all of your goals will come into alignment. Amen. So for those of you who may have had a rough week, this song is for you. It says, you are my strength. Hallelujah. like no other strength like no other reaches to me you are my strength strength like no Strength like no other reaches to me. One more time. Can we say it together? Say, you are my strength. Yes, you are. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. Come on, say, you are my strength. Hey, strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches, reaches to me. of your grace in the power of your name you lift me up oh you lift me up say in the fullness of your grace in the power Can we say it 
it together. You are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, you are strength like no other. Strength like no God is your strength. Is he 
your strength today? Hallelujah. Is he your fortress today? Hallelujah. Is he your healing today? Is he your deliverer today? Is he, hallelujah, your vision today? Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. time with me and just say you are my strength right where you are strength like no other strength like no other reaches to me hallelujah Oh, who wouldn't serve a God like that? Who wouldn't serve a God like our Jehovah? The new hymnist said, there's no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. And they're right about it. And we thank God for him, for his excellent way. I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Genesis, it should be really easy to find, really easy to find. Genesis, and uh, turn all the way into chapter 13, and uh, I don't know, as I get older, I get more excited about the Word of God, and the way that God has done, not just the things that He said, but the things, the way that He said the things that He said. In my prayer time, I always find myself thanking God for even saying what he said because his promise is that his word won't return void, but it will accomplish everything that it was set to accomplish. And so if he just said it, if God was careful to say it, hallelujah, then it means that I can stand on it. And that's why it's important for us to be in our word because you need to know what God said so that you know, need to know, so that you have an idea of where to stand, on what to stand in. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you today that if you don't stand on his word, you're going to fall for the devil's foolishness. But we thank God for his inimitable way, amen, Genesis chapter 13. And it follows, it follows that chapter number 12, which is a powerful chapter. And I've told all of our folks, amen, if you're visiting with us on today, welcome, first of all, uh, to your visitation, amen. And we pray that you'll come again, amen. And we, we say this in the sanctuary, when you come again, bring a friend, amen. That's what this is all about. We're at this point in time in life and in history and in this dispensation where it's time for us to be the witnesses to tell folks about Jesus. If he's done anything for you, then you don't need to hold on to it, but you need to open your mouth and tell somebody. But in Genesis chapter 12, we find 
this call that Abraham got on his life. This is a powerful chapter where God says, Abram, I want you to get you out of your country, away from your kindred and, and from your brothers, your father's house and from the land um, that you currently reside in and go to a land that I'm going to show you. That's in Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. And he says this to him. He makes this promise. He said, I will make your name he said, I'm going to make of thee a great nation. He said, I'm going to bless you. And, and this is what we always teach is that God can't, can't expect you to be a blessing unless he's already blessed you. And so some of us just need to lay a hold, lay, uh, lay hold on, grab, appropriate, identify, acknowledge. We need to find the way that God has blessed us because that is the source of what we will give away to others and then bring this kingdom to fruition. Amen. He said, I'll make of you, a, uh, he said, I'm going to make of you a great nation. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to make your name great and you shall be a blessing. If he said this to Abraham, he really means it for you. Amen. Because this is why he said in verse three, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So when you look at this, you will find that what God was really telling this incredible servant Abraham is that in you, I'm going to cause everyone in the earth to actually be blessed. And so if Abraham is blessed, then I am blessed because I'm in, I'm in Abraham. I'm in that legacy. I'm in that, that dispensation. And God had set forth a man. I'm so glad he called Abraham because had it not been for Abraham, there would be no Jesus. And had there been not, not been any Jesus, there would be no blessing for me. That's how I'm connected in. But when we go down to Genesis chapter 13, and, and, and we find that, that, that Lot and Abraham, Abraham was being obedient to the call of God to him uh, to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm, I get excited about that, and I'm going to try to take my time and not get too overly excited so you can hear the word. And, and God said this to, to him. He said, go out of your country. He Go to a place I'm going to show you. And, and I, I love that God told him I'm going to show you the place because if he told him the specific directions, he could have let go of God. He could, have, he could have put God on the back burner. He could have put God to the side and said to him that, that, okay, thank you, Lord. You've given me my directions. I don't need you anymore. But he said, no, no, no. This is a journey that you're going to have to take with me. So I'm going to, I, I need you to just go with me step at a time. And I'm going to show you what place that I want you to go to. He took his nephew Lot he took his nephew Lot. Now, meanwhile, I, I, I did some review for you in Genesis chapter 12 because he told him to get away from his country, get away from his kindred. So uh, I'm going to let you just deal with those details for just a moment. But he, 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 he took his nephew Lot with him, which was a, a noble effort on Abraham's part. But, but by, the time, uh, by the time we get down into verse, uh, about verse 6, it says the land was not able to bear them, meaning Abraham and Lot and Lot's uh, people and possessions and Abraham's people and possess possessions. It said it wasn't able to bear them that they might dwell together. He said because their substance was great. That means Abraham was wealthy. Abraham was a man of provision. He wasn't a poor man. He was one that had provision and they had plenty. They, they, they were, God set them off on the journey with an abundance, with much material. Amen. And it says they began in verse 7 to begin strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And it said, and look at this, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled them in the land. It said that the land had begun to get crowded because Lot had his crew, Abraham had his cattle and crew, and they had already come to a land that was already possessed by the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Look at your word. I want you to take out your Bible and follow me with this. I'm, I don't expect you to just take my word for it. I want you to take God's word for it. And he says, and look what he says. Abraham said to Lot in verse 8, he said, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. That's a noble thing. He said, I don't want to fight with you, Lot. 
I don't want us to become a dysfunctional family. I don't want us to, to, to take and fight with each other. But look what Abraham says is in verse 9, is not the whole land before us? He said, look, let's separate ourselves. I pray you, he said, if you will take the left hand and I will take, go and take the right hand. He said, now go and depart to the right hand and I will go to the left. And, and look what Lot did in verse 10. He lifted up his eyes. Come on, that's incidental. I'm going someplace right now. He lifted up his eyes and beheld the plain of Jordan. He looked with his eyes and he saw the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, and that the Lord had uh, the, the same land that the Lord destroyed, Sodom and Gomorrah, but, but it was like the garden of God. He remembered he remembered what the state was in the Garden of Eden. That's what the land looked like. And it says in verse 11 that Lot chose him and the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves one from another. So now that you have some, some context there, on down to verse 12, it says Abraham, or his name is Abram still by this point, but it said Abram dwelled in the land. Abram dwelled, he lived there in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and he pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord. Look at this word, exceedingly. I, I, think, I think that we ought to be of, of great care as we look into God's word today, that we have come to a place where uh, where, where there is great wickedness, exceeding wickedness in our land, likened to the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, likened to the days when God would have had to, to destroy the towns that, that represented, one time represented prosperity and fruitfulness, that, that once represented God's, saw God's hand, that, that Lot chose the land that looked good, hallelujah. But Abram chose the land that would become good. I want you to see this then in verse 14, and this is where we'll take our text from today. It says, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, you know, sometimes the Lord has to move folks out of your life, move folks out of your way, get distractions out of your, out of your purview so that he can talk to you. He said to him after that Lot was gone and separated from him, he said, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Let, let, me, let me just bring your attention to you again. It said, uh, lift up your eyes, lift up your head, lift your eyes and look. Now look at this. He says, from the place where you are. And he said, and I want you to, I want you to observe the place, but look northward, look southward, look eastward and look westward. For all the land which thou see before you, he said, to you I will give it and to your seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. And if man, he said, now, if you, I'll make thy seed so numerous, they will represent what you see when you look at the dust of the earth. This is the same God that told Abram to look up in the sky and see the stars. And, 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 and if you can count them, then I want you to just discern and understand what your descendants will look like one day. It, it, it required incredible vision. He said this, look in verse 17, he said, Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and the breadth of it. Walk through it, for I will give it unto thee. Now, now, a lot of times what we'll do is that when we've claimed territory, sometimes all we do is we'll walk into the land. We'll walk on the territory. And, and, and sometimes you need to walk with an authoritative walk that has this confession to it that where I set my feet, where I plant my feet will be claimed as territory for the Lord. Then verse 18, then Abraham, Abram, I'm sorry, removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. I want to, uh, I want to speak to you for just a little bit uh, longer today, just to, to ask of you this question that, uh, that God was asking Abram when he asked him to lift up his eyes. The question essentially was, Abram, what do you see? What do you see? 
And Abram looked according to the, uh, according to the instruction of the Lord to find what it is that God wanted him to see. Today, I'm going to ask you the same question. What do you see? Now, I've always been impressed by this um, organization called the Salvation Army. And, and this, this uh, mighty gentleman, this mighty preacher, evangelist called uh, William Booth, who uh, they were in England, in, in London, in, in those parts, amen. And this was about the year 1852 when things were, uh, when things were kind of topsy-turvy over here in this country, amen. You know what I'm talking about. But, but he, was, uh, he was kind of a radical Christian because he rejected the traditional concept of what church represents for most of us. We've grown accustomed to coming to a building and, and sitting down in what we had originally called uh, pews that have turned into stadium seating these days, amen? And we listen to the choir sing and we expect that the preacher will, uh, will, will dazzle us with a few eloquent sayings and, and we feel like we've been filled with some inspiration enough to go home and be uh, encouraged for the next week or so until we have privilege to come back and get some more. But this William Booth, who was the originator of the Salvation Army, knew way back when, not, not in current times, but way back when in the, in the, in the mid-1800s that traditional church wasn't quite what God had called us to. And so in, instead of standing behind pulpits from week to week, what William Booth chose to do was to take the gospel to the people, take the gospel out into the midst of the street. He would preach to the poor and to the hungry and to the destitute. He would preach to the prostitute and the drug addicts. And, and, and I believe that when I think about him, he inspires me because he was the kind of person that had vision beyond just comfort. He encouraged a, a group of, of other clergy, folks who had similar burdens and folks, folks who had similar vision with him to come join him in the streets. And he made street evangelists. Amen. This is the Salvation Army now that we're talking about. He made street evangelists that when he uh, went out all through England trying to recruit and trying to minister to souls everywhere because he had a vision that God could do something great in the lives of those people who would, who, who would submit nip to his saving power announced in the gospel of Jesus Christ. When he returned to, to London in about the year 1865, he, he, he had this, this vision where he had a thousand volunteers and, and this, this thing was called the Christian mission. We, we find it in, in the name of the Salvation Army today, but then it was called the Christian mission. Amen. And they took folks, gamblers, they took folks, they didn't want folks who looked healthy. They didn't want folks who were, were uh, looked upright. They didn't want folks who kind of looked the part of the Christian. They had burdens on their hearts to fix the folks who seemed to have burdens in life and, and were broken. Oh, if the church could get to a place where we would minister to the broken again. This, you know, I, I, you know I, I, the only way for me to fire you up today in, in context of this word is to remind you of fire. And this is the thing I love so much about William Booth the most is that he said to his students, his disciples, those who he recruited, he said, if I, if I had my choice... I wouldn't send you to school to get some learning. I wouldn't send you to the seminaries. I wouldn't send you to Bible school. I wouldn't send you to, to, to school, he said, but I'd rather send you to hell for five minutes and you come back real soul winners. I thought about that for just a moment that, that William Booth had this thing right because and a lot of people, especially in this generation today, don't necessarily believe in hell and they make excuses about how there really is no God and there's no proof that we can, that, that we can find a God. Yes, there must be something in the sky that holds the sun in its place and knows when to tell darkness to, to come over and overtake the light and something that brings the lesser, the lesser light in the moon 
moon and the stars and that the process is repeated. And when we look up and see the vast uh, uh, creation that God has made, particularly things such as the Grand Canyon, when we look at all the marvels of nature, we do conclude that, yes, there must be somebody up there doing something. But we can't get this even current generation to recognize that his name is Jesus. My Lord, if I had to fire you up, I would remind you, hell is not a good place. Hell is a, is a place that, let me just tell you this, I don't need to be more descriptive than this, it's absent God. It's the existence of where God is not, and everything that is God isn't in hell. That, that if you can't believe Oh, I wish I could take my time with this, but if you can't believe that there is a hell, there are some people who walk around today and say, I don't believe in the existence of a hell. Why would a good God send people to a, a place such as hell? I need you to understand that God has given us pictures of hell everywhere on, in our existence here today. This pandemic is a picture of hell. It, it, it is a picture of what life will be like in the absence of God. And I need you to understand that hell is the existence of the absence of God. It's the absence of blessing. And it's only the presence of cursing. It's the absence of anything that God represents, which means if God is grace, then there is no grace in hell. If God is forgiveness, there is no forgiveness in hell. If God is healing, there is no healing in hell. If God is love, there's only hate in hell. If God is justice, there is only injustice in hell. I need you to understand that when you're talking about uh, talking about trying to get folks delivered from their broken lives, you've got to sometime stop by and remind them that you don't want an existence in hell apart from God because if you have an existence apart from God, you have nothing but misery. What does this have to do with anything, preacher? What does this have to, have to do with Abram? What does this have to do with, with Abram? It, it has something very powerful to do with Abram. Because when God told him to look up and ask him, what do you see? I believe that this, was, this is the remnant of that spirit from Daniel. I believe that God was really saying to him the same thing that he had communicated later on in the generations with this young man named Daniel. That it's all about saving souls. I want you to look up, Abram. I want you to see the stars in the sky. I want you to look all around you. I want you to look not just south, but not just north, but not just east, but I need you to look westward too. And I need you to look all around you. And I need you to be able to see the souls that I want to save. And, and, and I want you to get this, that, 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 that if you don't participate in obedience in your part of the mission, that all of these will be lost and condemned to a situation called hell. What do you see? The three questions that, 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 that this brings to my mind when God was asking him this question is, uh, number one is, uh, are you looking in the first place? Are you looking? God wants us to, to determine, are, are we looking? God says, lift up your head. He wants to know, are you looking? What are you, uh, are you at least looking? There are some folks that are not seeking God. There are some folks that are just, they're, 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 they are, they are um, they're haphazard and they're careless about life. God says, seek me, hallelujah, while I may be found. But, but God is saying to us that we need to look carefully, not casually. We need to look with care and look with details. When we get up in the morning, we ought to be of such a mindset that we ought to, to, to look to God and ask God, what is my assignment for today, God? What, what are we looking for? We got to attach ourselves to this thing called vision that God has for us. Some of us are so content with life that we won't even look. 
You know, a lot of people aren't looking for anything greater because they're just satisfied with what you have. And I come to tell you that there's no such thing as a satisfied Christian. Because if you were to look in the way that Abram looked, he looked and he saw the number to be the same as the grains of sand. I want you to look on your carpet right now and see the number of fibers that are in, attached, that are weaved in your carpet. And if you can count them all, those are the souls that God would represent like he wanted to save like he told Abraham that he wants to save and, and we've got to do our part to be able to participate with Abraham in that great supernatural assignment of winning souls. Hallelujah. The next question, not are you looking, but the other thing is what are you looking for? What are you looking for? There are a lot of people who are who are looking in and looking for things that would just satisfy their only, their, only their own lust and satisfy their own pleasures and, and satisfy their own, uh, their, their own sense of treasure, amen? That, that there are people who have their eyes fixed on the, the beautiful things in this world. God gave them to us for a picture just to understand how, what he was capable of, but God never intended for us to get locked on the things that look so pretty. Everything that shines is not really gold. We have to stop. We, we, we can't stop short of the shiny things. We, you know, sometimes we're trying to live to obtain good instead of making good. God wants us. He created us to be creators so that we could make things happen. We could make things good. God has invested in the church the power to make things well. Hallelujah. And the third question I would, I would ask is, how are you looking? Are you obstructing your view? This is the God who told Abram, he said, don't stop and look just in the east. Some of us are distracted by just what we see in just one direction. But he told him to look all around you because my scope of, 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 of the work that I want you to accomplish exists in every direction. It's universal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The argument is that Lot, hallelujah, was not, he was not in a desirable place, not in life, and he was not in a desirable place, but Lot was distracted but by the riches of, of what Sodom looked like. And, and you know what? When you think about Abraham, Abraham was able to look past what it looked like. How many folks know what I'm talking about? La gentlemen, let me talk to you. Sometimes you want to look at a lady in all her unique uh, curvature and look at her in all her unique beauty, but you got to look beyond I'm talking to the young ladies because I'm trusting that my brothers have the right appointed one that God has sent into your life. But young brothers, I need you to understand you got to look deeper than just what it looks like on the surface. You got to be able to look into the heart. That's what vision is all about. You got to look past some things. Oh, I'm getting ready to help you to understand something that's going to deliver you in life. Amen. You can't get distracted by what just pops up in the place because then you'll be just like Lot. You got distracted by what Sodom looked like. But Sodom was filled with wickedness. You got to look on the inside of a thing before you start to make decisions. Abram was of a mature spirit and he was able to say that, you know what, the land doesn't look so pretty, but if I've got God on my side, I wish I could talk to somebody right now. If I've got God on my side, it doesn't matter what pretty it looks like on the surface, but if I've got my God on my side, it looks well enough for me to have a vision to make it better. I wonder if you, in this in your life right now are able to look at things that don't look like that they're not so shiny and they're not so beautiful on, on, on the outside right now but you can see what it can become you've got to be able to look beyond some things you can't get distracted by the surface beauty of some stuff everything that flows hallelujah isn't clean water I need you to understand that God is trying to help us to, to get to the place where we look beyond because that's what vision is all about. Vision is being able to look beyond where you currently are. He told Abram, he said, look up, and I need you to look in every direction, but look from where you are, Abram. Don't stop. Don't, you know, a lot of people need to get to an elevated platform, and then they get to a place where they can say, God, I'm waiting until I can get clean before I can come to church. I'm waiting until I can get a little better situated in my circumstance before I can become 
what you want me to become. And God said, if you're waiting to clean yourself up, then I got no purpose in your life because I came to clean you. I came to heal you. I came to build you up in your broken places. Some folk don't know how to look from where they are and see down the road far enough to be able to say that God can take me to places where I never dreamed I could get. Y'all need to hear me in this place. What do you see? What do you see? Hallelujah. Uh, The question is, what are you looking for? Hallelujah. The question is, how are you looking? Are you limiting your vision? Are you obstructing your vision? Hallelujah. God was trying to tell this this incredible servant, hallelujah, that I need you to be able to look beyond some things. You know, vision isn't close by. It's far down the road. And a lot of people need to be able to look far down the road. I think that's what it is when we have trouble in the African American church in particular and in the African American experience. I've come to understand that my brothers and my sisters are lacking the kind of vision that lets them see way down the road. I wish we were like our ancestors that were able to see when they were in slave fields and when their bodies were beaten and when their situation was broken when they did not have all the food that they wanted to eat they were able to see down the road through the generations and be able to say that I'm going to persevere I'm going to keep moving forward when that great servant Harriet Tubman was able to look down the road and say if we can't get there on top of the road I got an underground railroad that can take us to where we got to go but there had to be a person of incredible vision who could see freedom way down down the line. I, I believe that we've limited our understanding of what vision really is. It means being able to see far off to the thing that God has placed in your path called your destiny. And a lot of us, because we get distracted, because we get detained, and because we get derailed at whatever it is that stopped us in our tracks, that we never quite reach where our vision is. Young people, I'm trying to help you to understand that you can't just de- Determined that in this microwave generation that your vision is going to come to pass overnight. You got to work through some things. You got to learn some stuff along the way. You've got to walk with God and let God nurture you. Let God touch you. Let God elevate you. Let God move in you. Let God direct you. You've got to have an Abram spirit that says, yes, God, I'll go. And God will say, I'll take you to a place that I'll show you. You know, in in order for God to show you somewhere, you got to hold God's hand along the way. You got to follow him uh, along the path, which means you can't let him get too far ahead of you where he gets out of your sight. God has the vision, but if you don't have the the, the understanding, hallelujah, then you're going to lose provision to, to, to lay hold of the vision. God said that if you're not able to walk with me, I can't take you where you need to go. Many of us are trying to find where we're trying to go on our own strength and in our own accord and quite frankly have never even asked God God where is it that you want us to go I believe that today the church ought to come back hallelujah God said return to what vision I'm going to preach on it don't you worry about it but God said return to vision and he says that means return to me because I've got the vision for your life I know the plans I have for you and I know that there are plans to prosper you and take you to your, your, your sense of destiny and to your place of provision. God said that if you'll walk with me, if you'll talk with me, hallelujah, if you'll stay with me, if you'll dwell with me and allow me to live in you, allow me to speak through you, allow me to think through you, hallelujah, that I can take you to the place where I've destined you to go. That's what vision really is, being able to look afar I declare today that you have, you've forgotten to look. You've forgotten to dream again. God said dream again. Returning to vision is all about this thing. I'm going to make it crystal clear for you in in these series of of messages. But I'm going to tell you this, that returning to vision means that, that God said, I need you to return to the original agenda. Church, I need you back. I need you back on the fields. I need you back. 
I, I need you like that servant I had, William Booth. I need you to have a hunger for souls. I need you to have brokenness. You know, that's why God allows brokenness to come into our lives. I know that you've suffered some things in your life. I know that you've been sick from time to time. I know that you lost some, some significant loved ones. I know that you have suffered some tragedies. I know that you have suffered some situations. But God wanted us to see a couple things. He wanted us to know, hallelujah, just like William Booth says that if I want to really transform you, then I'll take you to hell for just five minutes. God said, I won't leave you there, but I need you to understand that, that when your heart is broken, when we know what it feels like to be broken, how many folks out there can say, I know what it feels like to be broken. I've been there, pastor. I've been on drugs. I've been in the, in the fields where I shouldn't have been. I've been in places where I wouldn't have wanted to get caught. I've been in situations that I had no business being in. God, God, God I've been there. Come on, somebody needs to agree right now that you've been in broken places and the Lord allowed you to come out of your broken place not just so that you could just give his name glory privately but so that you could have a testimony every testimony is followed by is, is preceded by a test we need to understand that when we go through some broken stuff I need you to get your, your gears up together and say that yes I'm going through but two things I know God will deliver me from this affliction and the other thing that I know is that my heart will be shaped just right it's called the heart of compassion it's called the heart of Jesus it'll be shaped just right for me to recognize somebody who was in the place right now where I was and God will give me the, the sense and God will give me the motivation God will give me the energy hallelujah God told Abram he said I need you to have a couple things I need you to have a couple things when you're on this journey right now I need you to have a persevering spirit because you're going to come into some circumstances that 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 are not going to look pretty, but I need you to just press your way through. That's what vision will do. Vision will keep your eyes locked down the road so that when you come to something that gets right in your face, you'll be able to go around it because you're still trying to get to someplace. I need some Christians today that can say without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not going to let what gets in my face distract me because I am on my way to something more important. I'm on my way to something more glorious. I'm not going to allow myself to get distracted by the, the, the stuff that looks shiny because the thing I'm going towards is more shiny than the thing that is in my, in my purview right now. I'm looking down the road. I'm looking at the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm looking at what Jesus did for me when he died on the cross called Calvary. I'm looking at what my soldier did for me. I'm looking at what my Savior did for me. I'm looking at what my brother did for me, that he died on that cross so that I might be free to give his name praise. How do you do it? You tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Somebody out there ought to know how powerful he is. If he delivered you, he can deliver somebody else. If he healed you, he can heal somebody else. If he saved you, he can save somebody else. But it just the, the question is, what do you see? Are you distracted by what's in front of you? Are you looking down the road to what God sees? Are you looking way down the road to be able to say that God I need to walk by vision. I walk by faith and not by sight. My faith, hallelujah, is connected with Jesus and when it's connected with Jesus I use his eyes to see way down the road. That's when you can see the numbers of, of, of people saved like the sand on the seashore. That's when you can see the number of people saved like the stars in the sky. What do you you see? Is your vision limited? Is your mouth shut because you can't see anything of any positive benefit with the church? God is saying that I've empowered you. I've anointed you. I've appointed you so that you can go out and do this work. Perhaps Washington wouldn't be so crazy if a few Christians would open their mouths and save somebody who would potentially be uh, destructive. Maybe somebody who charged through the Capitol building. If some Somebody told them about the goodness of Jesus. If they really had a relationship with Jesus Christ, perhaps they would turn their backs and say, we can't do this right now because the Lord is watching us. I wonder if you know that your neighborhoods could get cleaned up and your house could get cleaned up, that your life could be elevated if your mouth would just be open. But it depends on what you see. What do you see? 
Is it just about you? Is it just so close that it's in front of you? That's not vision. That's all about you. But if you look through the eyes of Jesus, connected to him by the power of faith, with your eyes, you'll begin to see broken lives healed. You'll begin to see families that were torn apart. You begin to see them come back together. You'll, be, you'll begin to see men begin to act like men again. And women act like women again. You'll begin to see young children nurtured in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. You'll begin to see souls that were destitute, having no provision, no place to stay, no place to go, come into the realm of shelter. You'll begin to see God pour out his love in ways that we can't even characterize. And you'll begin to see lives transformed by the power of the gospel of peace. You'll begin to see witnesses. Church, I challenge you. Open your mouth. Start small. God gave you the recipe. He said, start in Jerusalem. Start at home. Test it out on your kids. Parents, I'm asking you today. Yes, I'm going to be preaching evangelism to you. And I'm going to keep preaching it until we do it. Because there's a lost world and it's becoming more lost every day. Every day that we keep our mouths shut. The power is in you. But the question is, what do you see? We can tell folks who need corrective vision because they're satisfied with what they have. But when they put on the eyes of Jesus, they see a lost world that is in need of a Savior. If you got him, give it away. Give it away. Bless somebody. Hallelujah, let us pray. Father, we bless you and praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for your servant Abram, Lord God, that was able to see beyond hmm, the flare of Sodom but to see the potential of what your prairie could become. I believe it was desert looking. I believe that it wasn't impressive, just like the people we might see on this journey, Lord God. I believe that, that it would, what he was looking after, Lord God, wasn't anything to run and tell anybody about, but I believe that when he looked through your eyes, he saw fields that would, be, that would flourish like milk and honey. He saw potential. God, give us corrected lenses so that what we see is what you see. So that we can do what only you have done. Thank you for our salvation. We thank you for those right now who are asking you to come into their lives, to heal, save, deliver, set free, make whole, and preserve them. We ask, oh God, that you would stir up in somebody, even now, Lord God, that, that they might begin to understand, I need a Savior. And just like you came into our lives, Lord, we can't explain it. We'd be hard-pressed to try to convince somebody in the physical because now we recognize that something spiritual happened to us. 
that when you came in, you changed our hearts and you changed our minds and you began to fix what was broken. So let us just tell people that, that he's able to perfect everything that concerns you. And we bless all those who are crying out to you even now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. This is a song we all know well. Um, it just says, write the vision, make it plain. Hallelujah. Write the vision, make it plain, that they may Glory to His name. 
has me saved from sin. Jesus, so sweet, he abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Singing glory. Bless God. Hallelujah. How many folks can say singing glory to his name? Precious name. You ought to get excited when you say the name of Jesus. Amen. Because he's represented in this bread. Hallelujah. He's represented in this wine. This bread represents his body, which was broken for us. Amen. And we know that when his body was broken, it was just so that ours could be made whole. I thank God for my whole body. Will you confess with me? My body is whole because his was broken. Would you say it? My body was whole because his was broken. My body is whole because his was broken. Hallelujah. We bless God for that. Amen. And we thank God for the wine that represents... And now you know this isn't literal wine. This is pomegranate juice. Amen. Don't talk about the pastor. Amen. And so we thank God that, that, that this wine that was representative of his blood that was shed on Calvary for the remission of sins. And it was because of his blood that was shed on Calvary that we're able to have a relationship with our God. We were reconciled by the power of the blood. Amen. Hallelujah. The blood has power in my life. The evidence of blood, the blood's power is in my life. Is the evidence of the blood's power in your life. Is the evidence of the blood's power in your life. The Bible did say this, hallelujah, that we are, as often as we come together to commune together, that we should remember him. And so I'm going to pray over these elements, amen, if you would just hold your elements in your hand. Amen. It says that, Father, we bless you and we praise you for this bread that represents your body and we praise you for this this wine, Lord God, that represents your blood that was shed on Calvary. We can't say thank you enough for what you've done for us. We ask, oh God, that you would convert these things, Lord God, from a physical use, Lord God, to the spiritual representation to us, Lord God, of your physical body and your blood. And we bless these elements and the partakers even now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let your heart say amen. And on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it. 
And he broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Let us eat of the bread together. Hallelujah. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. I won't henceforth drink of the fruit of this vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Until then, drink ye all of it. Let us drink together. Hallelujah. Go ahead and say hallelujah. 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 We bless him. We praise him. And we honor him. Because we know it was the blood. Hallelujah. That saved us. Amen. And we thank him for what he's done for us. Amen. Hallelujah. He's coming back again. How many folks know that? For me. Is it coming for you? Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, what do you see? Hallelujah. Do you see what Jesus sees? That will stir you up to action. So we bless God. Let us pray. We ask that you, if you need to contact us, contact us on our website. Contact us for prayer. Contact us just to, just to reach out to us. But go ahead and get in contact with us. Let us know that the Lord touched your life. And that you're ready to be in the fellowship of the, of the body of Christ and with the fellowship of the saints. Amen. And we look forward to praying with you and to working with you in these days of building the kingdom. Amen. Now, I will say this before I give the benediction. Amen. Neither one of these are my teams for the, uh, for the Super Bowl tonight. Neither one of these are my teams. Y'all know who my team. I'm a Redskin man, and we're coming back one day. I don't know how long it's going to be, but we're coming back. Amen. But if it's your team, then I, I salute you on your victory early. If your team wins, I salute you. Amen. Don't hurt yourselves tonight in your Super Bowl partying. And just don't forget that the Lord is asking you to look out among you. The harvest is white. The fields are white with harvest. Look out. Open your eyes and see. Let us receive the benediction. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you and we glorify you. We give your name praise and we thank you, Lord God, for the time that we've been able to spend together today. We thank you, Lord God, for just stopping by to worship with us, God. And then we know, Lord God, that as you stop by, Lord God, you don't come empty-handed. That when you come by, Lord God, you come bearing gifts and you come bearing healing and deliverance, Lord God. You come bearing solutions and you come bearing uh, information, revelation, Lord God. You come to bring transformation. And so we thank you, God, that we've had a chance to sup with you. And we ask, oh God, that your grace and your favor and your loving kindness be upon our brothers and our sisters, Lord God, that every home might be touched by your favor. Do something, Lord God, to show your love for us. Even in this moment, Lord God, help us to discern what you've already done. Continue to give us grace. And we thank you and worship you for it. Now may the grace and favor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with you. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let the redeemed of the Lord say together, Amen. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Worship our King. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Death could not hold. You are the real.